Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I am going to do a little bit of journal play. This is a brand new journal, Jane Davenport one. I'm actually going to go all out Jane Davenport today because um, uh, a few weeks ago I had a little splurge. <laughs> I've been looking at all this stuff for ages and ages and ages and ages and ages. And I finally, I finally did it um, and went a bit mad. So it's about time that I got some colour into my brand new journal. So I'm using the Jane Davenport Brights and I'm going to stick to three colours I think. So I think I'm going to go for Best Friend which is this bright pink and I'm literally just going to slop it on. <laughs> I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to get some colour on the page. This is what I like about art journaling. You really don't have to think too much. So I think I'm going to use Best Friend, Buzzy and Jimmy. So Buzzy is the yellow for Buzzy Bee. Well done Jane. What's that? <laughs> ah dear. I like that other people have strange heads like me. <laughs> That's not meant as any insult. I meant imaginative. <laughs> Oops, just contaminated my yellow there. It's all right. Yeah, so I'm just going to start off just by getting some colour on the page. And I'm not kind of thinking about it overly. But I love these bright colours. So it's like, let's go for it. It's the first page of my journal. Let's make it a nice, happy, happy one to play with. So this is all new to me. We'll see how the paper responds. I'm hoping that I like it. I'm actually brave enough to get into it. I bought a Diana Wakely journal. I don't know how long ago. And I was so excited. You know the fact it's got all the different... It's got burlap in there and it's got fabric in there. and But it's so beautiful I've not been able to risk... <laughs> risk doing anything with it yet. I think is my very first journal I got was a Dilusions one and I'm not overly in love with it. Um, I don't find the paper, lots of people love it, but I don't find the paper responds that well. I can't watercolour on it that easily. Um, so I thought I'd give this one a try. But maybe The other thing as well is it was my first journal and so maybe I've learned a lot about it since. Like for example, not to let too much water get into the spine because the amount of wrecked pages I have from that is a bit unreal. So maybe it's just a, a bit live and learn sort of thing. But I think because of that, because I have the journal and when I bought it I was so excited and now it's really not my favourite thing. I still go back and work in it. Um, you know, I will finish it, I will complete it. It's part of your creative journey, isn't it? Whether you like the work or not, it's all part of your creative journey, what makes you grow and we're all kind of learning as we go. But it's not my favourite. And I think because of that, I've ended up almost buying these new journals because I love journaling and I love the idea of a nice pretty journal. And you look at everybody else's work and it looks so beautiful, but I'm sure they have bad days too. I think that's the thing to remember. Even the artists that you look and admire, they started somewhere too. So we're all in different places on the journey. So let's just go with the flow and see what happens. Yeah, so I think because of that, and I bought a journal I loved, and then now it's not my favourite thing. I'm almost afraid of starting my new journals. So, I am being brave and actually using one of the uh, journals that I have bought myself. So right now I'm just creating a background. This is probably all going to be lost, but just so it's there. A bit of bright colour. And I've just literally sloshed that all over the place. As you can see, great skill. <laughs> Are you impressed? <laughs> oh dear. Add a bit more yellow. I actually picked up some of the some of a different green there. It's not quite wasn't quite wanting it that dark. That's fine. I'll pick it up a bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. This is the very first page as well. Normally when I start a journal I go right into the centre but I've I've got some of her stickers as well and I think it's one of them is like let's start art or something. 
Now I'm going to put going to put this little lady on here first. Um, sorry, I'll let that dry. <clears throat> um, this is part of the napkin art. So I'm going to use her, but obviously it, w it is transparent and it's about to go onto a psychedelic background that we've just painted. So I just want to make sure her face, when it goes on, has some sort of normality to it. Oops. My desk is wet, which is not doing the tissue paper any good. So what I am going to do is just paint out her face. So um, I'll get my little thing in there. And what I have got is I have got some... System 3 Buff Titanium 024, which is a nice flesh tone, and I also have just some normal gesso. Sorry, I'm off camera there trying to, to put that back on. It's not very interesting for you. And I've got some of the um, Indigo Blue Gesso Good. And I'm going to pop, pop some of that on and mix it in with that... Um, I don't want it completely white, but I also didn't really want, um, I don't want it as strong as that because, you know, Jane's got the look of, you know, the white and the peach. I don't really want to lose that. So I'm just painting on the back of the napkin. And what this will do is when it goes onto my page, um, because it's got this paint on it, the, co the, the colours won't show through. They'll show through a little bit, but not as much as they would have. And it um, it will make her little body and face stand out. Hopefully, it will anyway. It seems to be. Hopefully, we'll not rip the the tissue as we do this. Okay. So I'm just going to set that to dry. Now, what I'm going to do is just come off camera, and I'm going to look for some script stamps um, to work a bit more on my background page while that dries. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back, and I've rummaged through my stamp set. I've got some that I haven't even used, which is shocking. So I've got this one from Carabelle. I love Carabelle stamps. Oh. This is a new one. My favourite stamp shop <laughs> closed down. And I didn't realise it was closing down. I just... Oh happen to I'm just gonna get my ink pads because I've grabbed the wrong one. Right. Yeah, I just happened to pop in um on a weekend away or something because actually it's nowhere near where I live but it's part of my holiday treat. And then as I was in there I found out that it was closing down. Got it. And I know you can buy all this stuff on the internet but there's something lovely about walking around a craft shop, especially one that Sells nice and usual things, not the run of the mill stuff. So I think I was that fed up and depressed at the fact that they were closing down that I just went a little bit mad and bought loads of stuff <laughs> like I was never going to see it again. Okay, so I'm going to stamp sort of in the middle here. I know I kind of want some of the writing to go onto her face. Now, there's an artist, I know her, I know her name's Tony something. And I can't actually double check it because I'm using my iPad to record to record this video. It's connected to my camera, so I can't kind of go and double check it. But she does the most beautiful works of art and they have a kind of script that comes in onto the face. So that's kind of inspired the idea of this. Now I'm not stamping this hole, I'm just taking little sections, little sections of it and putting it all and it all around the page just adds a bit of interest. Sometimes it's not going to stop. <laughs> okay, so that's that's that one there. What other stamps have I got? Yeah, I think that'll do for the minute. Okay, now I'm going to grab my my little lady in. Oh, she's still she's still a bit wet. She's still not quite dried off. I'll see if I can. The paint's still just that little bit wet, so I'm going to see if I can just dry that with a heat gun, what will happen. I have plenty of these napkins, so if it doesn't work, <laughs> if it doesn't work, we'll try again. So this is exciting. You know the expression, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> Welcome to watching paint dry. 
just what you've always wanted. Right, just dried that off a little bit. So the same technique as when I use my rice paper, I'm going to use water to divide the tissue. Now this was two ply, I've already taken one of the plies off because although I can do it nice and quickly, I could guarantee you when I was on camera and trying to do it quickly, it would not have worked and we would have had half the video me struggling to get the tissue apart. So for the sake of my sanity and for the sake of your viewing experience, <laughs> I did that off camera. So I'm just going to do that because I want to make a feature of the girl. I might use the other parts of the tissue paper as well at some point, but we'll just, we'll see. The girl's in my head at the minute and then I'll see where it goes. This is how I normally craft. I know my first few videos I was prepared and I think that's good because it's less faff and waffle from me. But this is how I create in general. This is how I work. So you get to see the creative process. I kind of want her going on both pages. Something like something like that. Okay, so I'll go and get my decoupage medium. It would have been handy if I'd got that out, but thankfully it's in the drawer next to me. So I've still not ordered more. I said in the last video that I did, I really need to go and order some more of this stuff. And I didn't. Okay, so this is pen tart decoupage, varnish and glue which I am severely running out of. So, I will put some on here, roughly. I think it's best to adhere both the surface and the tissue paper. So it's very rough. Oh, sorry, I'm taking this off camera. I will be in trouble for my father-in-law if I don't let you see the whole thing. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to put a bit on here. See, I'm getting less precious about this mat now. I'm risking it. I'm risking getting medium all over it. Which I'm sure I will regret. This is how I work. It seems to be that, you know, creating whatever I'm creating in that moment it seems to be a priority over I'm looking after <laughs> looking after my table, tidying up. I will give that a quick wipe. Okay. This is a little bit of a delicate operation. I'm now about to get medium all over the back of my journal, so I'm sure that adds to the texture, doesn't it? When I eventually go to cover it. Okay, so now I've done that. I will put some medium over the top. Now this is as far as I'd got in my head was this girl and oh, the text is coming over her face which is quite nice that is what I was wanting but at the same time it's subtle so you'll be able to see the difference as I gradually stick this hair down you will see that you see all of the stuff behind there you'll see that you'll see the colors you'll see the text you'll see it all but on the face, we've still got that slight skin tone first, which was what I was wanting. I wasn't wanting a bright pink face. I mean, in some pages that works, and I will probably do that at some point, because, you know, why not? It's an art journal. It's an art journal. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be real. <laughs> That's her adhered to there, almost. And we have her there. So I will now clean up my desk and have a little think about what I want to do next whilst that dries. And I will be back very shortly. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Hello, I'm back and this lady's kind of dried off a little bit. So I still don't really know what I'm doing with the page. <laughs> Just play and see what happens. I'm going to use these little stickers. This is a Jane Davenport and this one says start the art which I thought seemed an appropriate sentiment for the beginning of a journal. So I put that there um, and I think I was just going to try and doodle around it a little bit. 
So I've got my Posca pin here. I'm just going to draw around the edges of that and then give it a sort of wiggly frame I like doing. So yeah, I've had a little look at my stash and I think I'll probably be going with doodles and splatters now because I can't really work out <laughs> what I want to do. So I've just drawn in a little frame and I am doing some little checkered boxes. This is the easiest thing in the world to do and it's so effective. Now we've seen quite a few, of, well, I post a lot more on my Instagram than I do up here because um, obviously I don't have time to film everything that I do um, and I was crafting a long time before I joined the whole YouTube thing. I've only been here a few weeks. So if you want to see more of what I do, try have a look at my Instagram. So yeah, I do this a lot, just drawing a little border and doing this little square technique. I'll probably do it around the page as well, but I'll not make you sit and watch all of that. And it's kind of gone into the sticker a little bit, so I'm just going to make that look a bit more deliberate by drawing a little line around that and it just frames it frames it slightly. So then I've got my white Posca pen as well and I'm just going to fill in the gaps with the white with the white pen. Okay. Sorry it's not overly interesting to watch is it? <laughs> so how do you what do you do with your page when you're getting stuck? That's the thing. I put the colours down I knew I wanted the colours in the background, I knew I wanted a little bit of text, and I knew I wanted the girl. With regards to the rest of it, I have no idea. So I will just end up playing. Oh, also, while I was off camera, I just added this, these bits here. They were on the napkin anyway, um, and because they would need drying time with the decoupage medium, like the girl did, I just did it then and there while I thought about it. So yeah, I've just added those little bits. Just there. Okay, and this is my border. You can see how that really comes comes together. Just framing, framing that. Okay, so that's that. Um, now I've also got some of the little tattoo things. So I was thinking about using a crown. Um, I think I'll do this pink one up here because it looks. I think that'd be quite nice in contrast to the green. And if I had scissors next to me, that would be incredibly useful. My favourite ones that I normally use are downstairs. And I can't be bothered, so I'll use these ones. They're the Tim Holtz ones. I have to say, yeah, lots of people love them, but I don't really like them. I like my little fiskers. I think these have got serrated edges, and I just can't be doing with that. When I'm doing a lot of fussy cutting and cutting all my flowers and things like that, I want something, I don't know, I just don't really want serrated edges to that. But they will do for just now, so I think I will give her a little crown. Of course, that did come with a lollipop stick. Oh, look, here it is, yeah. I was going to say, but I no longer know where that is. So I'm just going to put that down here. So I've not tried the Jane Davenport rub-ons before so it'll be interesting to see how well they rub on. So far so good. I love this, it reminds you of being a kid it's to get these things from cereal boxes. <laughs> People say that to me like, oh you're so creative and I was like, not really, I just play like I used to do when I was a child. It's just cutting and gluing and glitter but for grown-ups. Okay, so I've popped, popped a little crown in there. Um, I think it needs a bit of sparkle. So I will grab, when I can find it, my sparkle pen. Ooh. She says. Okay, I'll not spend hours looking for that. I will grab that later. <laughs> okay, I've got some more little, little stickers. I don't quite wait, know where I'm going to put these, but I liked them. Such quirky stuff. This. Oh, this is not cut off very well. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I'll put them there. That's quite 
quite cute. Mm, I've also got a bit of writing here, so I like writing. I like writing on a page. It looks. It looks, I don't know, I just like it. I think I'm going to tear this. I'm going to um, buy this sentiment here. It's not showing up overly well on my screen. Maybe I've got it too bright. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got those few bits in and bobs. Um, let me see, is there anything else in here that I like? I don't know whether to put a second girl in. Should we try that? See what happens? Why not? And then I might take some of that pink splatters as well. Just getting that out of the book, cut a bit more carefully around here, and then I can choose exactly where I want all of those little splatters to go. Take all the extra elements of it. I was thinking that if we put it, we have our kind of yeah, put it there. So yeah, I like that. Collaged girls. As you can tell, I have no idea what I'm doing. So hopefully that'll make you feel better. <laughs> Somebody who has no idea what they're doing, thinking, hey, I'll make a YouTube video. People can watch me, not knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> oh dear. Just rubbing this bit of te texture from the napkin there. Oh, there we go. Just rub that a bit harder. Let's see if I can... Oh, sorry. There we go. There's a bit of it there, but I don't really mind. Okay. Actually, that's coming off, but... Oh no, I do like it. I was thinking maybe I like it with just the top bit of hair, but no, I don't. Okay, so I would say rub firmly, because clearly I didn't do it firmly enough, just there. Okay, it's a bit patchy, but that's fine. Embrace imperfection. Maybe we'll put those stars up there. I'll take away this big chunk of blue, because I don't have a huge amount of blue on my page. So again, it's the whole layering thing. Everything's everything's there. Everything has a purpose, even if you end up covering it. And I think that's what adds intrigue when you have lots of different elements. Do you know it's years since I've used rub-ons? Absolutely years. Now, where would I like this pink to go? Ooh. Yes, I quite like it down the edge of the sentiment. That kind of blends that into the page a little bit. Oops, that bit's just fallen on the floor. Okay. Take that off. Sorry, stopping to talk. Stop talking. Just trying to think and talk at the same time. And I've just dropped <laughs> the last bit of rub on the floor. Oh uh, dear. Okay. Well, we're getting somewhere. Which is always good. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to put this one as well because um, make more messy mistakes. I think when it comes to crafting and art and things like that, you need to kind of embrace 
the mistakes. It's the only way you'll learn and not be afraid to try. Um, and what, there's a really good quote about mistakes and art. Is it being creative? Is it being creative? Is learning to make mistakes and art is learning which ones to keep. Something, something along those lines. So, I think yeah, it's not being afraid to to make mistakes. Now I'm just going to pause the video again because I want to grab my ink tents just to kind of highlight this little sentiment here, um, and find the rub-ons that have landed on the floor, <laughs> and we'll add those in. Okay, be back in a sec. Hello. So I found my ink tents pencil. I do uh, put it in with my paintbrushes instead of back where it belongs. <laughs> As you do. Okay, so while I was off camera, um, I added another bit of a sticker sheet there, and I'd kind of lost the art, so I've redrawn that back over with my Posca pen. All the leftover bits of rub-ons, I've put some up there, I've put some there, and then I found this face here. Um, partly because I had one here, and so I thought that balanced it up. Um, yeah, so I've got a few little subtle things uh, going on. So now I'm just sorry about the angle there. Now I'm just going to get my ink tents pencil and just emphasise this here. Water that back because it's a bit strong. I think I've mentioned before I like doing this with ink tents because you have the properties of watercolour. So it's like you've got a little bit of wiggle time that if it goes on too strong that you can knock it back nice and quick. Um, but once it's dry it's ink so it's not going to move if you put another another layer on top of it. So that's personally why I, I like to do this with ink tents. I know a lot of people do it with like a pencil. Um, I don't know, I struggle with that. I struggle getting it how I look, how I like. I seem to lack the control. So it's kind of unusual. I've not really used any of the Jane Davenport stickers before so the um, the ink tense is kind of bleeding into the sticker a little bit. That's okay. Make it work. Make it work with a bit of doodling or something like that. Let's see how we, how we get on with that. Oops. So I'm just going to do that now. The other, that's it. Once that's dry, I'll maybe go around with my Posca. Um, and create a little bit of a of an outline with that. So the other thing I want to do is I want to mimic the the um, border that I've done there, but also the border that Jane's got in here. She's kind of got like a red doodly border and then sort of loops. So what I'm planning on doing, I'll just do one line of it here, and then I'll do the rest off camera so that you don't have to see loads of it is doing my kind of fallback border that I do on everything like that with the um, Posca pens and then with the Jane Davenport paint over pens I'm going to use this pink one because that's got like a pink border the trouble is I have this on manual focus so I could end up losing I don't know if you can see that properly it's got like a little red border around it um, so I'm going to do that, just kind of almost do like a wiggly line with the pink and then mimic that sort of scalloped border thing, like so. And I'm going to do that all, all around my page and then see where I am with that. So I'll just do that off camera because that's basically it um, and it'll yeah save it, save it getting too boring and too long. Okay, so I'm back. I've done the border. Um, I did do the border with the pink Jane Davenport pen but it was quite chunky and I didn't like it so I drew over it again with my white Posca pen um, so it's kind of got a bit of a two-tone look and then all the little arches I covered with my Spectrum Noir um, glitter pen so I'm just going to also put a little bit of that over the crown and then just do some swooshes in her hair. to give it a bit of extra sparkle and then I might just pop some over her eyes so that she's got some sparkly eyeshadow and maybe the sparkly lips as well. That'll just maybe make her 
stand out from all the other girls. Okay, so I've got that. I'm also just wanting to draw a little squiggly red line around my sentiment here, just to emphasise it, and I'll probably do that both in black and white. Probably should have waited for the black to dry in between that, but hey-ho. Right, so that is pretty much me. Just want to do a few little splashes, so I'm just going to cover up some of my, some of this. I don't really want splashes on the on the girls' faces. Oops. And the, the same time here. Yeah, just okay. Okay, and I'm just going to take my black. This is Spectrumoir Aquatints. I don't think they are available like this anymore in liquid form. I think they've now brought out a pen. I've not actually tried the pen, so I can't give any opinion on it. But um, for me, this is just easy for doing um, quick splashes. It saves me having to activate some paints, so um, I just I just use that. So just doing a few splashes because you know no page is complete without it. And I've kind of just tried to go in this main direction of how the images fall on the book. Okay, and that is me once I remove her, her masks. That is my first page in my Jane Davenport journal. So hopefully there will be many more to come. But for the minute, <laughs> that is me. So thank you so much um, for watching and I hope to be back with you soon. Take care then. Bye.